everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tyne. So I'm here today to talk to you about the sewing retreat that I went on last week, week and a half ago. And I talked about my plans for the sewing retreat in a previous video. Today I'm going to talk to you about what happened, the actual retreat. How did I find it? What did I do? Yeah, so hopefully you'll find this interesting and you'll keep watching. First of all, what I'm wearing is my newest make and my current favourite pattern. Oh my goodness, I adore it. So this is the Deer and Doe Sirocco jumpsuit, which is a jumpsuit for stretch fabrics. I made it out of a scuba crepe from Lubidoo Fabrics. Now, Laurel from Lubidoo sent me this fabric. She put a call out on Instagram a few weeks ago when she first got this in and she got it in in three other prints as well, the scuba crepe fabric. She put a call out asking for people to test out the fabrics just to sort of see how they work and make something with them and give us some feedback. Yeah, so I opted for this amazing floral print and I love it. I made the garment yesterday, well Saturday and Sunday, it came together so quickly, pretty much made the whole thing on my overlocker except for the arm what are these called? Sleeves and the hem of the trousers. I used a zigzag stitch on my standard machine for that but everything else was done on the overlocker and it was just an absolute breeze. The fabric just behaved so so well under my rotary cutter, under my sewing machine and my overlocker. It was just an absolute pleasure and I'm so delighted with the outcome. So I've already got another Sirocco planned and I thought I would show you the fabric that I'm cutting it out in tonight. And it is this amazing geometric print cotton jersey. Now this is navy blue and it's got gold geometric shapes on and I just really really want to make a jumpsuit in this. I got this from Lamazi Fabrics. I think I got it for Christmas from my mum. I thought I would make it this month as our sewing patterns and prints theme for June is geometric so I thought this would be a perfect make to fit in with that and hopefully it should come together in around an hour, hour and a half and I'll have another amazing secret pyjamas jumpsuit. So as I explained last time we had plans, myself and my mum, to detour slightly on the way down to Bedford for the sewing retreat and call in Ashby, Ashby de la Zouche, for a little visit to Sew Your Own Wardrobe, which we did. It was wonderful, as always. Emma was there looking after us extremely well. It was just, yeah, a really lovely experience to spend some time there again. So I was quite restrained, I think. I spent around about £40. I bought two pieces of fabric and one pattern so I think that was quite restrained of me. So I thought I would show you them now. I got two separate meters of jersey and I just, well, if you know me you'll know exactly why I've chosen this one. It's just black and it's got these gorgeous little kitty cat faces and these little pink, they're like kind of rounded triangles. I don't know what they're supposed to be but they just look really cute and I thought that would just make a really nice top and actually I had a delivery today of the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern which I'll show you. So the new Romy top, I would make the top version because it only needs a metre of fabric and I think that would be a perfect pairing. I might see if I can get a hold of some pale pink binding because you can use binding for the neck detail on the Romy and I think that would just look really, really sweet. The other piece of fabric I got from Sew Your Own Wardrobe was another jersey and it's this super lovely pale pink leopard print. Now I've already got this in yellow as you will know I made the Tilly and the Buttons Nora top from this but this is just a lovely pale pink version. It would be a bit boring to make another Nora. I may make Tilly and the Buttons Romy or I may branch out and make something else who knows but yeah I just got a meter of that because that'll be perfect for a top and I bought a pattern and it's actually a pattern that I have had on my radar for so so long and I don't know why it's taken me so long to buy it basically and it's the Megan Nielsen flint pants if you scroll way back down my Instagram feed from about a year ago I had posted this saying basically that I needed to make them 
and it's taken me until now to actually purchase the pattern. So yeah, I just really, really love the culottes, the shorts, and I love the little tie detail on the waist. So I got that as well. And that was our little trip to Sew Your Own Wardrobe. We then went for a little sneaky gin and tonic, sitting outside as the weather was quite nice. We sat outside a pub in the sunshine, had a little gin and tonic, rested ourselves for a little while, and then headed on to Bedford. So when we arrived in Bedford, which I've never been to before, but when we arrived there it was a lovely little drive along the river and we found our venue which was called The Embankment, which is, I think it's technically a pub with rooms, but it's so, so much more than that, it's much nicer than just a pub. We went in, we got ourselves checked in, I think it was about half seven by this point, so we literally checked ourselves in, put our things away, got changed, freshened up, and we headed out into Bedford to find somewhere to eat because we thought if we were going to be eating at the embankment throughout the sewing retreat then the night before when we were just there for an extra night we wanted to eat somewhere else and we went for a little wander, didn't wander very far found a place called, I think it was called the Cultural Quarter and they had a few different restaurants and other things there there was an amazing looking restaurant called The Key which was a seafood and grill. And my mum loves seafood, I love seafood. So that's where we went. And we had an incredible meal. The biggest prawns we have ever seen for our main course. They were called giant prawns, but they were the most giant prawns I've ever seen. And it was delicious. And we had a lovely bottle of wine and it was just perfect. And then we headed back to the embankment, went to bed, to get ourselves some rest ready for the next morning. So then on the Friday morning, the day that the sewing retreat was due to start, we obviously got up early, had ourselves some breakfast. The breakfast at the embankment was really, really, really good. Such lovely choices. I think on the first day I went for avocado on sourdough toast with possibly a poached egg. Yeah, I think there was a poached egg involved. I had a little Bloody Mary <laughs> with my breakfast, which was quite, you know, what's the word? Indulgent, that's the word. But it was my little holiday, so why not? And then after breakfast, we went for a little wander into Bedford because obviously I'd Googled to see if there were any fabric shops. It said there was a little fabric shop called Fabric World. So we headed into Bedford to find Fabric World. Well, that turned out to just be quite a small shop with, the dressmaking fabric wasn't particularly high quality, but there was lots of haberdashery items, so it was nice to just have a little browse. But as we were walking there, we passed a market stall, and this man had a market stall full of fabric. So he was just setting it up as we were on our way to Fabric World. So then on the way back, he pretty much had everything set up and he was starting to put his prices up. And we could not believe the prices. The fabric's not the highest quality fabric in the world, but the prices were a pound a metre, two pounds a metre or three metres for five pounds, three pounds a metre or two metres for five pounds. So obviously, you know, I picked up a few pieces just to make basics or to make twirls. You know, I couldn't really resist those, those prices. The first piece that really caught my eye was some baby cord. And it's this lovely black baby cord and it's got embroidered red and orange flowers all over. So this was three pounds a meter or two meters for five pounds. So I got two meters of that and I just thought they would make probably a nice pair of overalls or a pinafore, possibly the Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet or something else. I don't know, but I couldn't really resist that. So five pounds for two meters of that. And then I got this blue, I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's a bit like a chambray. It's got this sort of almost quilted texture. And on the reverse, it's just white. I can't really <laughs> describe it. I really don't exactly know what it is. But this was two pounds a meter, three meters for five pounds. So I got three meters because I thought that would just make perfect fabric to twirl up a dress in. So there's a couple of dresses, quite fitted dresses that I'd like to try out first in a cheaper fabric before I go on to some of my more expensive fabric. And I thought that would just be absolutely perfect for it. So I got three meters of that. So that's 10 pounds in total for five meters of fabric so far. I then picked up 
a metre of just some plain white jersey which I think I've got in the in the wash at the moment so I haven't got that here to show you but it was just plain white jersey and then this khaki coloured viscose jersey and this was a pound a metre and I got two metres I kind of wish I'd got three metres now I've just noticed a little hole in it that might be why it was only a pound a metre <laughs> but I can work around that I'm sure I'll just make sure that's not within my garment but yeah two metres of that two pounds kind of wish I got a bit more because I think that would make a lovely kilo wrap dress but never mind right so that was our little adventure into Bedford we then headed back to the embankment and at around 11 11 30 a.m we met Sarah in the bar so Sarah Fletcher who was the lady who was running the retreat met us in the bar and we were expecting other people to be there but she said that Debbie who was one of the other participants was running late she had a dog related emergency so she was going to join us a little bit later and Georgina was going to join us a few minutes later as well so we headed through and we had a huge space actually to work in so Sarah had set up the embankment's private dining room but that had sort of sliding doors that opened out onto another dining room which they don't tend to use unless they are really really busy so we actually had that whole space she just opened up the sliding doors and we had the whole of that space which meant we could spread out it was quite a small group so there was Sarah leading the group there was myself my mom Debbie who would join us later that afternoon and then Georgina who originally was going to be an assistant and to sort of support people but she ended up being there as a participant instead so it was lovely having a small group and I think because it's the first time Sarah had run a retreat as well I think it was perfect having a smaller group for sort of the first time to iron out any issues and you know just get used to it and see how it all works we got to work I started cutting out my Eden coat. My mum started working on the sew over at Heather dress. Then we stopped for lunch. So Georgina arrived and she started working on her dress well, focusing on the fit of a bodice. So then we stopped for lunch, had some lovely deli type sharing things. There wasn't enough of it, but that's something that Sarah discussed with them later anyway. So yeah, we had some food and then we went back and carried on. So I carried on with my Eden coat. There was lots and lots to cut out, lots of markings to put on. So I was working on that. My mum carried on working on her dress. Debbie arrived and started working on her garment, which was, I think the first thing she worked on was a pair of Portobello trousers by Nina Lee. And yeah, it was just a really lovely afternoon just to focus completely on sewing. So once I had cut out everything that I needed for my Eden jacket, I decided that I didn't want to carry on and make that because anyone that's made a Tilly in the Buttons pattern knows that the instructions are so super super clear that they're foolproof really so I didn't need to make that there where I would need support from Sarah and it seemed a bit of a waste of Sarah's skills and knowledge for me to carry on making that so I decided to put all of that away and I got out the Lander shorts by True Bias and started to look at those. Now this is where I started to learn so so much. So I haven't actually made a pair of fitted trousers yet. I've made the marigold jumpsuit which is quite loose fitting, it's got an elasticated waist, it's quite forgiving, I made it in a viscose, not very structured at all so not no fitting involved really with those. I've made the portobello trousers again out of a stretch fabric so no real fitting involved I did have to make some adjustments but you know not mu not many so this was the first real pair of structured fitted shorts or trousers that I was going to make so I asked Sarah's advice on which size to cut we looked at the measurements the finished garment measurements the body measurements she measured my waist my hips and it came out that I was going to be a 10 on the waist grade into a 14 on the hips so to start off with that's what we did so I cut out the tissue pieces at a 10 at the waist grade into a 14 at the hips and then we decided or Sarah decided to do a tissue fitting so that's where if you haven't done one before that's where you actually pin the tissue pieces together and then go and try them on your body to see what the fit is like and see what adjustments need to be made it's incredible what you can learn from just doing that so off we went to the toilets Sarah tried the tissue pieces the front and the back 
pinned together at the seam allowance, pinned together the inside leg, again, the correct seam allowance, and she tried that on me well. Oh, and the darts as well had been pinned, the dart at the back. So she discovered that the back piece, so the bum piece, didn't come up high enough to meet the waist of the front piece. So she knew that meant that I would need a full bum adjustment. So the piece at the back was only coming up about halfway. So she said that's what we were going to need to do. We would need to do a full bum adjustment. It was getting towards the end of the night then. We sort of needed to pack away and go down for dinner. So we thought we would leave that till the next day. Off we went, had a little bit of time in our rooms to relax, then went down and had dinner. Dinner was lovely, really nice to get together and chat, have a glass of wine and then off we went to bed and then Saturday was a new day again we got up and had an incredible breakfast what did I go for on the second day I think I might have had sausages and poached eggs and toast on the second day it was really really lovely I didn't have a bloody Mary that day <laughs> I was being sensible I think I might have had peppermint tea and then we went and got cracking so we got started sewing straight away so Sarah had come in with some resources for me to look at and it was some fitting sort of advice from closet case now I'll link it down below because it was so so useful now obviously she was there to talk me through everything but this fitting advice from closet case patterns basically has all the possible fit fit issues that you could have around your bum your the crotch the hips and it diagnoses what the problem is and gives you what you need to do as a solution so that was really really useful so Sarah was able to sort of talk me through it and say right we need the full bum adjustment this is what we need to do once we'd adjusted the pattern piece for the full bum adjustment so that was done by slashing into the into the back pattern piece from one side to the other then opening it up sort of to create a, a V I suppose on its side and then adding some pattern paper behind and I think she added two and a half inches to that part of the pattern so it was the inside leg of the back pattern piece. We used then used that pattern piece to cut out some muslin fabric to create a toile of the shorts. So I did that, sewed them up, <laughs> had a little bit of a disaster because Oh, I wasn't concentrating and I sewed them up in the most ridiculous way that were not a pair of shorts. <laughs> so I had to do some unpicking, sew them together again, sewed the darts and then we went and tried those on. And then this is where more of the fit issues became noticeable. So Sarah came over and pulled in the darts a bit more so she noticed that my waist, it was still gaping at the waist and my waist needed to come in more. So she brought the darts in so took more out at, at the darts. Then it was getting what sort of is called smiley lines around the crotch area. So that's where you sort of have the fabric bunching up as if to create folds which look like a smile. And she showed me in the closet case fitting advice what that means and therefore what you need to do. So I think we then adjusted the crotch seam. Yeah we made some adjustments on the toile itself and then transferred those adjustments to the pattern pieces. So it was just fascinating. I absolutely loved learning all of that and knowing now that the things that we put in place there, the changes that we made, I wrote everything down. I can then apply that to everything else that I make, all of the trousers, all of the shorts jumpsuits, play suits, it's going to be so, so useful. So then I just started to make my shorts. I was making them out of a twill fabric, a cotton twill by Robert Kaufman, which I bought from Sew Me Sunshine. So here are the shorts. There we go. So I made it, making them out of this sort of khaki green or olive green cotton twill from Robert Kaufman, which I bought from Sew Me Sunshine. I bought it as a remnant. I've got so much fabric left as well. So I'll probably make some sort of bag with it. You can see I've got the pockets on the front and I've lined those with oh, rainbow fabric. The pockets are pinned onto the back so what we did in the pattern it suggests attaching your pockets first but on the back but we didn't do that because because of the changes we made to the back pattern piece the pocket markings would have all been in a different place so we decided to construct the shorts and then Sarah pinned them onto my bum. <laughs> And now I'm going to sew them on, just make sure they're level. Got the waistband done, 
I just need to do the buttonholes and the buttons and attach the belt loops at the top. Oh, and hem them. <laughs> and then we're good to go. So I've just, I just popped a hobby craft after work and I picked up some buttons so I can get cracking with those this week and get them finished. But I'm so excited to have a really well fitting pair of shorts. So then on the Saturday afternoon, we packed up early because we had a yoga session and it was with a wonderful lady who runs a business called Yoga with Coops. And it was just the most perfect thing, the most perfect thing after two full days of sewing where we had sore necks and sore shoulders. And actually she came round quite near the start and sort of had a little feel of my shoulders and she said they were rock solid. <laughs> so, so tense. So I don't know whether obviously it's a, you know, stressful job or all of the sewing I was doing or if it's related to CrossFit that I do, but yeah, she said I was incredibly stiff. So that was just perfect. So relaxing. She came around and gave us a little neck and shoulder massage at the end, which I would have liked to last for about half an hour. <laughs> but yeah, it was perfect. And then we went off again to our rooms, got ourselves ready, came down for dinner. And what was really lovely on that Saturday night was Sarah had had a little chat with the manager because there'd been a couple of issues with the food. You know, things hadn't gone completely smoothly. And that was to do with miscommunication between the staff at the embankment. So Sarah had had a little chat with them, sort of explained that it wasn't what she expected. And they sort of resolved that by allowing us to choose anything we wanted from the menu. And also drinks, we had a lovely bottle of wine, start a main and dessert. So it was just really lovely. We were sort of given free reign of the menu just as a way of saying, we want to make your evening really lovely. And it was perfect. It was really, really good. The food was great, really loved it. So then on the Sunday, got up, had breakfast, went and continued sewing. I worked on my shorts again. My mum was working on an Ogden cami and doing a full bust adjustment and widening the straps. So she was learning quite a lot from Sarah then. We then had lunch together. We all had lunch as a group. Lunch was wonderful. So they had taken on board what we'd said on the Friday about there not being enough and they had provided lots more and it was really, really lovely. And then myself and my mum decided that we would leave not long after that because we had that long drive back up to Newcastle. So we said our goodbyes around half past one and then off we went back home. I just came away feeling so incredibly inspired and also I'd learned so much. I'd spent three days doing what I love to do most with some really, really lovely people. So a huge thank you to Sarah who was running the retreat who is really, really knowledgeable about fit particularly. And I've already got plans to have some more sewing sessions with her. And also myself and my mum have booked back on to her next retreat. So she's running the retreat again at the start of November and we've booked on again. And also Debbie has booked on again. And Georgina is also going to be there. So everyone that was there this time is going back for a second time. So that should give you an indication of how successful it was and how wonderful we found it. I would highly, highly recommend it. Georgina was wonderful. She was working on her own things, but also helping others. And she was just a really lovely person to be around. And then Debbie was just so fun and, you know, was able to share loads of interesting stories about our own life and our children and she was just a really cool lovely person to get to know. All in all it was a wonderful weekend, hugely inspiring, a perfect venue, perfect location, lovely people and I'll leave a link to Sarah's website down below so that you can go and have a little look and treat yourself because we're all worth it. Yeah I don't know what else I can say other than it was wonderful I loved it. I will share my finished shorts with you as soon as I get them done. But thank you so much to Sarah for a wonderful retreat. Thank you to my mum who was wonderful company and yeah, it was just, a re she treated me to the weekend so it was lovely. And thank you to Georgina and Debbie also for just being really, really lovely. And yoga with coops as well. <laughs> it was a great weekend. I'm running out of time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming back having chats in the comments that's all awesome and yeah thank you all for being lovely
podium, there was a pair of shorts.